Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Today we're going to show you how to set up, configure uh, OpenVOS, which is a vulnerability scanner, uh, open source vulnerability scanner, uh, I might add, uh, something equivalent to Nessus or GFI uh, LandGuard for Windows. Um, so let's get started. Uh, in the last video we showed you how to install Kali Linux, update it, upgrade it, do a disk upgrade and all that good stuff. Um, today we're actually going to go through installing OpenVOS. So once you're booted up, go into your Applications menu, go into Kali Linux, and then Vulnerability Analysis. Scroll down here to OpenVOS and go to OpenVOS Setup. Let me just maximize the screen here. Okay, you're going to see it's going to download some stuff um, from the NVT uh, repository, um, you know, to get the latest and greatest uh, vulnerability updates bunch of stuff here is going to scroll past the screen. Don't worry about it. It only takes a few minutes to uh, get started. Um, after it downloads its necessary stuff, starts and stops some services and restarts them, uh, it's going to ask you to set up a password. The default username is going to be admin. Um, that's just part of the script. Uh, if we were to set this up manually, obviously we could change that, but you know, we're not going to go through that. I was going to write some custom scripts to do it, but you know, quite frankly, things started going haywire with those scripts. I think some of those commands were made for older versions and it's not really working correctly. So um, I thought that the installation process or the installation script for uh, OpenVOS 6 or libOpenVOS 6 was screwed up, but it's actually not. I think it was just me making a mistake because I wasn't familiar with how it worked. Um, I think it was just a configuration error on my end. Um, so I've got that all squared away now uh, and and it is working and I, I know in the last video we said that you know they do use a GUI desktop version but uh, like I said it's kind of clunky and messy and unorganized at least for me anyway um, you can use it if you want guys I'm not going to show you how to do it uh, there's a web interface that to me is much cleaner it looks much better you can generate reports from it something that I don't believe you can do in the desktop GUI version of this um, so we're going to be working with that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to initially set it up and get it going, which we're doing now. Um, then I'm going to show you some of the options inside of the web interface. Uh, I'm going to show you how to update the uh, the vulnerability lists. Um, I'm going to show you how to set up a scan. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to set up users in here if you wanted to have other users like looking at the results or stuff like that. Um, so we'll get started with all that. Uh, I don't want to make this video entirely too long. It's not going to be one of my infamous 45 minute long videos because I know after a while it gets boring and quite frankly it gets a little boring for me too. So I'm going to try to make this one as quick as possible but as informative, straightforward and easy to use as possible or easy to understand I should say. Um, you're going to see here where it says there's an error. Don't worry about that just yet. Uh, it says SQL Lite 3 failed to prepare uh, the table. There's no such table main.meta. Meta. Um, don't worry about it, it's fixing itself right now, it's adding that table uh, in there. So it should just take uh, about a minute or so for it to get to where we have to go to enter in a password um, to continue on with the setup. And so we'll just let that happen here. Um, you know, OpenVOS, I'm still pretty new to it, uh, like I said. Um, but you know, it works pretty well. I did some localized scans here in, in my testing. Um, you know, it's pretty fast. Uh, I'm not sure how fast it's going to be scanning from the outside in, the outside world. I don't anticipate you're going to be doing too much of that, uh, unless of course you're looking for vulnerabilities in a certain kind of router or uh, if you're scanning somebody's web server uh, or DNS server, backup server, any kind of public facing server, um, you know, you're going to use it like that too. Um, but, but realistically, you know, this is part of the information gathering process. We're going to do a whole separate video just on information gathering. I'm going to take you step through step, um, you know, how to how to accomplish that and how to get results, how to organize them and use them uh, to plan your attack. So, you know, there's a lot more videos that are going to be coming up um, for me on this stuff. Um, there's some stuff that is new in Kali Linux that I'm not really familiar with. So. I'm going to learn it before I try to teach it to you guys. I mean, other, otherwise it's like the blind leading the blind. So we're not going to do that. Uh, I want you guys to learn things the right way. And uh, I want to know fully how it works before I even 
try to present that information to anybody. So uh, if you hear me pause my microphone throughout the video, I apologize for that. I'm clearing my throat. The allergies are real bad this season, and uh, I am definitely suffering, so I apologize for that. Anyway, moving forward uh, in the terminal here, uh, it says enter password. As I said, the default user is going to be admin, so we just need to make a password for this admin um, username. So make it a pretty secure password, guys. I mean, this is you're like the admin of the system. You don't want it you know, easily guessed or broken. So you're going to see some messages here. Uh, no rule f uh, rules file provided. The new user will have no restrictions. That is why it's important to create a good password, a strong password. You are the super user on this system, much like you are root inside Linux. And as I said, the username is admin. It's been successfully created, so we're good with that. So the next thing we're going to do is fire up a web browser. Now, if you have Firefox installed or Chrome installed, you can use that. I'm just going to use iSweasel. It's easier that way. And as soon as that opens up here, um, we're going to be using HTTPS or the SSL protocol to access this. Um, first, I want to go ahead and clear out my certificate here only because I want to show you guys start to finish um, how it works. Sorry, edit preferences. Advanced view certificates. Uh, anyway, if you were curious, this is how you clear out a certificate. I'm going to go down here. Oops. Expand open VOS and then just I'm just going to delete this. Um, the reason why we're going to have to go through this is a security exception here is because it's a self signed certificate from open VOS. Uh, so you're going to get a warning here. And I'm going to show you exactly what it is. So it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash localhost or 127.0.0.1 colon and then the port is 9392 obviously you see I have it already typed in here so I'm not going to retype it um, so once you hit that you're going to get with secure connect failed uh, well that shouldn't happen you know what let me close down the browser here start over so I just deleted that certificate so perhaps that's the issue there we go Okay, so you won't have to delete the certificate, guys. Don't worry about that. That was my own mistake. I should have did that before we started the video. Anyway, if you did just the fresh um, setup of OpenVos, this is what it's going to look like when you first navigate to the web interface. Um, you're going to get this connection is untrusted. That's fine. Just go down to the bottom. Like I said, it's a self-signed certificate, so it's not validated by a known certificate authority or CA, like VeriSign or something like that. So just click, I understand the risks. And then go down and click Add Exception. Another box will pop up. And then just click here on the bottom, Confirm Security Exception. Pretty straightforward. Now you'll be presented with a login box here. So remember the default username is admin. And then the password you created during setup. And here we are, we're logged in. Now as you can see, this interface is, it looks a little too much, but it's not. Uh, it's very simple. You got a quick start wizard person on on here. I don't recommend using that. I mean, it's kind of cheating almost, and you don't really get too many options out of it. Um, the first thing that you need to do uh, when you get into your new system is you're going to need to update your your vulnerability database. So you can go into, um, I believe it was in. See, yeah, administration, and then you're going to see it's NVT feed, SCAP feed, and CERT feed. You can update, and I and I imagine you would want to do this every few days uh, when you're logging into this, if not every day, and just click synchronize with feed now. It may take a while depending on how outdated the feed is. Okay, so it's got to download it, then it's got to apply it to the database. Uh, I'm not going to do that here because you know it takes a while, and this is just a demonstration anyway. So anyway, uh, if you wanted to add users, you can just go to administration users. Now you could type in a username, like let's say you had another person working for you or with you, and you wanted to give them limited access to the report system or to be able to initiate scans. So let's just call this user Bob. We'll assign him a password of password. I know, real secure, right? Um, we're going to assign him an observer role. 
okay and host access allow you know you can just leave that and just hit create user and we don't want to remember the password because we're not logging in as Bob okay so now you can see your users down here here's admin um, host access allow all and we're a role of admin now Bob is just an observer okay so the next thing you want to do to actually get into making a scan happen is you have to set up a target okay so going down here into configuration click targets now targets gonna be your IP address domain name what have you you can see already by default there's one in here local host host local host one IP address and then the port list is open boss default no credentials for SM, uh, SSH or SMB don't worry about any of that whenever you want to create something new when you get into that menu there's gonna be a little star button box here and if you hover over it says new target so click on that okay so your new target you can name it you can name it whatever you want I, I like to try to keep my naming conventions to what I'm doing so in this instance we're gonna just use Acme Inc for uh, I don't know demonstration purposes that would be the company we're scanning the hosts now here's the thing you can do a manual IP address so if they just had one outside IP address or one outside domain name you can just enter it in here manually um, for this I'm just gonna do one of my Windows boxes here on the network um, if you had let's say they had multiple outside static IP addresses or if you're doing an internal audit and they have you know 10 20 100 machines you can actually create it like a text document with all those IP addresses in it um, maybe you might even be able to do the CIDR with the slash 24 or whatever um, and then you can upload that file by hitting browse and then choosing that option I'm not going to do that in this demonstration I'm just gonna try to make this as quick as possible uh, you can do a comment here so let's say that this was their outside you know IP address their public IP address I would just put uh, first WAN scan okay you can put anything in there just to identify the you know what, what the scan is going to be about uh, sorry uh, next is port list so now in here you can actually um, create your own port lists and stuff like that I mean most of these are going to cover most of what you want to do um, this actually uses the back end of nmap to perform its scans on ports and stuff like that um, so you know you could do like all IANA assigned TCP ports uh, you could do all IANA TCP and UDP all privileged TCP which is generally 1 through 1024 port 1 through port 1024 um, that's your most common service ports uh, me on the other hand I'm a little sneaky I like to hide my services as much as possible on way higher ports like way 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 higher ports so they're not commonly scanned um, all privileged TCP and UDP um, so again any ports 1 through 1024 TCP and UDP all TCP ports I'm assuming that's 1 through 65,535 all TCP and NMAP 5.51 top 100 UDP uh, top 1000 UDPs um, NMAP uh, top 2000 TCP and top 100 UDP you know it's really up to you or open boss default you can look at these and see what they are or what they consist of and I'll show you how to do that in a little while uh, for right now I'm just gonna choose the default here um, you can do SSH credentials you can set that up in the settings I'll show you a brief summary of how to do that um, not that you're ever really going to use that per se uh, so you just you want to create target now so you have your your company name in there um, you have your IP address or a set of IP addresses uh, you have your comment and your port list of what ports you want to scan so click create target and now you can see in your target list here you have Acme Inc and you can edit that at any time you can get rid of it if you wanted to uh, you can do look at the details of it um, I edit edit it uh, you can clone it or you can export it um, don't think you're ever gonna do that unless of course you're never gonna deal with that customer again they're not on a contract with you to do scans X amount of every X amount of months then you could delete it if you want to um, okay so the next step you're gonna want to go to create a task okay the task is actually gonna consist of doing the scan so we want to go in hit new task from scan management 
Now, I like to keep my naming conventions the same across all types of scans that I'm doing. Okay, so this one I'm going to name Acme Inc. again. Okay. Uh, comment optional. I'm just going to do this again first when scan. Okay. Um, now the scan config. These are also configurable and you can make your own, I believe. Um, you can do full and fast. Uh, full fast and ultimate, full fast, uh, full and very deep, and full and very deep ultimate. Now again, I'll show you where it, where these configurations are. You can create your own, manage them that way, or see what these consist of. I'm just going to do full fast and ultimate because it's pretty quick, and you know for this tutorial that makes sense. Um, alerts, you can set up alerts. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Uh, you can set up a schedule. Honestly, why would you want to schedule uh, a scan? Just kick the scan off, walk away. Uh, simple as that. Um, but I guess if you wanted to, you, you, you could do that. Uh, slave optional. We'll get into that. I, I'm not even really too sure what that is. Um, observers, optional. Now you can, remember Bob is an observer. You can enter in Bob if you wanted to. I think that's how this works. Okay. Um, see maximum. Just leave all this default. Click create task. And now you can see in your tasks that the scan is in here, the status is new, and the task is made visible for Bob. Okay, um, So you're going to see here under total reports, there's nothing going to be here. The status is going to be new. It's waiting for you to kick the scan off. Okay, If you set a schedule, don't worry about it. It'll hit it on a schedule. It's basically creating a cron job for that or a scheduled task. So in actions, you want to click the start, which is obviously this little green box of the arrow. Okay, so once you do that, up here, if you want to watch this live, up here, you can um, choose refresh every 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds. I'll choose 10 seconds, and then just hit this green refresh, what looks like a refresh button here, to apply that. So every 10 seconds, it's going to refresh and show you the status of here, and it should fill up in green all the way to 100%. So while we're waiting for that scan to actually take place, uh, I'm going to show you some of those other configuration settings that we could have made, like a schedule and stuff like that. So in configuration, you can go to port lists. See, it's already at 16%, that scan. Uh, configuration port lists. OK, so this is where we chose in our scan, um, or setting it up, what ports to scan. If you ever wanted to check these out to see what they consist of, like all privilege TCP, all privilege TCP and UDP, so on and so forth, uh, or even OpenVOS default, just click on the name and it should bring you up here. So you're going to see port count 4,481 ports, no UDP ports. So it's going to start end 1 through 5 protocol TCP, 7, 9, 11, 13, and you can see in some of here, there's going to be some, some wider ranges like 61 through 224. And it's a protocol, TCP, so on and so forth. And you just scroll all the way down here. As you can see, this is quite a long list. So let's just scroll quickly here to the bottom. 65301 to 65301. So they don't go the whole gamut of 65, 535. They just don't. I mean, generally speaking, you're not going to be that high up there. Some of my services are, but most people don't. Uh, anyway. So scrolling all the way back up here, um, if you wanted to add a new one, see this like little star uh, box up here, you would click add a new port list. You can name this just like, uh, you know, TCP intense or TCP whatever. And then you can make a comment here like ultra list of TCP all ports. Now if you look down here in the port ranges, this uses like the nmap syntax. T, <clears throat> excuse me, T is going to be for TCP, and then U is going to be for UDP, okay? So you can change this to whatever you want, but just keep that in mind. So taking the first set of numbers here, it's going to be TCP ports 1 through 5, and then comma, the next port is going to scan a 7, comma, the next port is 9. If you, do, if you want to scan individual ports, like let's say you were looking specifically for port 21 and port 25 and port 80, you would do, you know, 21, 20, 21, comma, 
25, comma, 80, so on and so forth, right, on TCP. Um, so then uh, ports 1 through 5, if you want to do a port range of like 1 through, you know, uh, 20, I don't know, we'll just make up a number. You can do that. So, or you could do it from a file if you if you had that, you know, in a file somewhere. Um, and then just click create port list and that'll show up in your port list. We're not going to do it now because, I mean, it makes no sense. So let's go down to credentials and configuration. Now this is where we're going to set up where it asked you for, you know, SSH or SMB credentials. Um, again, it's the little blue box with a star in it, new credentials when you hover over it. Click that. You can name this like, um, you know, I don't know, uh, SSH or something. And then you can use your login. If you had one, uh, you can use a comment like SSH creds. And then you could type in your password here, or if you had a public or a private key, you can do that, or passphrase, okay? I'm, I'm not gonna do this, but then you would click create credential, and it would save that. So if you knew, you know, when you noticed, when you went into targets, and uh, you created a new target, let's just do it again here, you can choose SSH credentials, so on and so forth, um, SMB credentials, so on and so forth. Anyway, uh, so let's go to scan configs. Now remember, this was when you created a task, right, up here. Um, if you can see full and fast, full and fast ultimate, full and very deep, full and very deep ultimate. Let's just click on full and fast just to take a look here of what it consists of. So any minute here it'll load. Okay, so you can see it's going to be AX security checks, one of one. Um, if you highlight over here, it's going to tell you the trends, dynamic, action. Um, you can click on this and it'll pop up just this individual. It's going to give you a risk ID here of medium, uh, CVSS 3.3, timeout default. Okay, so let's go back. Sorry guys, I have to keep pausing the microphone to clear my throat. Allergies are killing me here today. Um, brute force attacks, you can click on this and it'll show you here. It's going to try all these different brute force, or it's going to scan for all these types of vulnerabilities for brute forcing. Okay. Um, and it's going to give you your risks, medium, high. Obviously, when we re present the report to our clients, if anything is listed as crit or critical, those are things that we need to address like yesterday. Um, things that are marked high, we need to address them ASAP. Things that are marked medium, let's take a look at it, see if it's something we need to address immediately, which would, we should address everything immediately. And if it's low, just take a look at it. It might just be something like, hey, this you know server has SMB enabled. Well, no kidding, it's a Windows domain controller. I mean, let, let's get serious. Or even a work group computer. Uh, not too much of a big deal, so long as it's not accessible from the outside, right? Not a big deal. Um, anyway, going back, we can go down to default accounts. Let's click on that. Just to give you some examples, I just want to show you what the different ones look like here. Um, default password public for account public. Hi, and then see here is a crit. Anything with crit we want to address like yesterday. Okay, we don't want to mess around with that. That means it's it's highly uh, vulnerable. Um, but again, guys, as you can see, there's you know all sorts of things in here and under full and fast. If we went back and looked at another one like uh, full fast and ultimate, there's let's just take a look here. There's gonna be more stuff like uh, buffer overflows. Uh, Debian local security checks, default accounts, FTP, denial of service. Let's take a look at FTP. All the vulnerabilities for FTP. Anonymous FTP checking, uh, default timeout. Um, there's no risk associated with that, you know, because anonymous FTP, I mean, you know, hopefully they're smart enough to have a password. If not, we try to log in. If they don't, well, that's a problem. Um, going down here, let's look. Uh, Cerberus uh, FTP server, uh, medium, let's go look at a critical one. Auto FTP manager, uh, manager FTP client, directory transversal, transversal vulnerability, that's critical. Um, that's a problem. So let's click on that one to see exactly what it says. 
check for the version of auto FTP manager FTP client um, when was it created August 25th of 2010 so uh, last modified 2012 so if anybody's still running that um, that's a problem <laughs> uh, nonetheless you'll have the references sometimes in here and and also this may show up in your report too you'll have the CVE reference if you were to click on that I'm just gonna open another tab here so we're not confusing anything um, the CVE was not found in a database okay so you can actually probably go out to the regular CVE database or just even search this on Google let's go and do that quickly and we'll just do another tab and then we'll go Google and let's type in there you go so we're gonna go out to nist.gov and let's take a look at the vulnerability here last revised 823 2010 when was the vulnerability found and released 821 2010 gives you the overview which pretty much I mean it, it gives you more in in-depth explanation of what it is uh, impact um, gives you the base scores and vulnerability software and versions so it'll give you some versions down here FTP manager 4.31 and vulnerability type you can you can view all the stuff here we're not going to go into that guys I don't want to make this video another 45 minute video um, so anyway that's as far as that goes uh, going back into um, setting up alerts now the beautiful thing about setting up an alert is you can have let's just click on the add new alert you can have the results of a scan email to you so <clears throat> excuse me name the alert like um, mail me uh, you can make this for you know Acme Inc and then task run status change to done so when it's done we want it to always email to and from who so we would put like um, you know sex scan at that sec now dot com or something right um, you can do a simple notice that it's done or you can include the report or attach the report I'd prefer to probably attach the report um, <clears throat> excuse me PDF is not working in this version of the web UI it's a known problem the encoding is completely wrong and I'll show you that when we look at our scan here in just a minute you can use HTML you can use any of these other than test text if you wanted to an XML file whatever whatever makes you happy pretty much but HTML is probably gonna be your standard until they fix PDF I would love if they would fix PDF but nonetheless it's not working right now don't worry about any of these other things down here honestly I don't really know what they mean and I probably would never use them um, but anyway so yeah you're pretty much you can assign that in your task if you noticed uh, in the task there was an option for that uh, so if you're creating a new task again um, alerts optional and you can add the alerts so when the scans finish it would email you uh, let's see the other thing we're gonna look at is schedules you can create a schedule in here like I said to kick off a scan like if you wanted to do you know make that scan happen like once every you know month or something like that you can do it in here it's basically like setting up a cron job or, or a uh, it's which is equivalent in Windows to like a scheduled task um, you don't really need to do this I mean it's it's really up to you guys if you want to uh, next thing we're gonna look at here is report formats and here you can see uh, HTML if you just click on that it's going to tell you what its type uh, description single HTML page the scan um, the PDF like I said is not working we're going to click on it anyway just to show you uh, let's see here Ch -ch 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 PDF and it says created May 29th 2013 well we know that's not the case but uh, application PDF it's not encoding right I, I mean I, I don't know what the problem is here and why they won't fix it or maybe they just don't know how I, I don't know but Greenbone they're responsible for that so 
it's not OpenVos, it's ScreenBone. So you can blame them. Send them an email. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, getting back to configuration, that's really all we're going to get into. Slaves, I honestly haven't played around with that yet enough to know what it's all about. Um, I guess you can set up so other people can scan from your system. I don't know why you would want to do that. I guess remote workers or something, or if you were on another, you know, if this was like a server and you were on another node on the network or something. Um, and then agents, I don't know, uh, agent, or maybe slaves are like additional machines to use as resources. I'm not too sure what any of that is. I got to look it up, but, uh, you know, feel free to poke around. Um, you can go into your administration settings, like I said, and see where all your stuff is stored, you know, um, like where your log files are, where your plugins directory is, so on and so forth. Um, and what else? What else do I want to show? That's, that's pretty much it at this point. Um, let's see what this says here. Advisory, Scapa Cert database missing. Okay, so you could probably search in here for different advisories too. Um, like we were doing when we went out on Google and searched at uh, CVE. Uh, I believe once the SCAP database and CERT databases are updated, you can actually probably do that in here. I'll play around with that and see. Um, but again, it might take a while to update all of that, so I'm not going to waste your time on that. Uh, you get oval definitions, um, asset management hosts, uh, SCAP database is missing again. So that's pretty much it. Let's go back to our task. I'm sure our scan is done by now. Okay, so I'm going to show you basically how to read the scan. Okay, so you know it's for Acme Inc. Status is done. Total is one, one scan. Um, the last report is May 29, 2013. Your threat level is low. If it was crit, it would be critical in here. Um, high, same thing. Um, again, you can trash this. You can, you know, do the task details to see what it all was all about. Um, you can see we have 11 low, you know, things found here. Um, I just want to go back, and when you want to actually view the report, you got to click on the report date, which is in our case May 29, 2013. Now, you're going to see that it's going to give you a couple of reports here. You know, honestly, I always do a full report. Um, just That's just the way I like to do it. You can do all filtered results if you wanted to. I mean, you know, whatever you want. But just do a full report, guys. It's really much easier. It gives you most information anyway. Um, result filtering, you know, results per page 100. You can change this. and I'm just going to leave it all as default. So anyway, like I said, PDF is not working. If you clicked PDF, I will show you what will happen. And as you can see here, it's going to try to download it or open it. If you read the first part here, it says, which is a PDF document, zero bytes. Zero bytes means there's nothing in there, guys, right? So <laughs> it's not working. It's not encoding correctly. And again, I read about it online. I just, they haven't released a fix yet for whatever reason. Um, okay, so anyway... Uh, go down to HTML and click the download button and you can save the file to wherever you want or you can just open it with uh, you know ice weasel the good thing about the HTML too, guys is you can edit it if you know a little bit of HTML coding add in your company logo or your you know contact information or something um, you can also do highlighting of you know certain things um, and then you can print out that report and give it to your customer. Obviously, you're not going to be able to send them an HTML file unless, of course, you found some sort of converter to convert from HTML to PDF. That's up to you. Uh, maybe OpenOffice would do it. I, I honestly don't know. I'll have to try that out. But anyway, looking at it, you'll see the summary here. Um, host summary, if you click on that, it's just going to bring you down to the next line, really. Uh, it's going to tell you how many low it found, how many medium it found, how many high it found. Uh, false positives, logs, so on and so forth. General report summary here. Uh, you'll see. Yeah, let's see. Well, you got a NetBIOS 137, 139. It's a dead giveaway. Uh, 445. Um, let's see. ICMP is open. Uh, SMB client is open. I mean, you know, not a big deal. Uh, anyway, scrolling down, you can look at the OS version. Now, 
since I mentioned that it does end map as well, excuse me. Sorry guys, my voice really screwed up today. Um, since I mentioned that it uses nmap as its background, um, it, it does a very basic OS fingerprinting. Um, nmap alone, when you use it yourself, does a very much more accurate, I guess you could say, uh, OS fingerprinting. Um, so what you see, OS version, Windows 5.1, domain, desktop 1 is the work group. Um, and then it says SMB server version, Windows 2000 LAN manager. Well, I know it's an XP machine, so, you know. Uh, nonetheless, going down here, it's going to kind of list the same idea here, uh, straight on down the line, and then it's going to give you a route um, between 192.168.2.3, uh, which is the IP address of the Kali Linux box, um, and then our target host here. Uh, let's see. Synopsis, the remote host appears to be running VMware ESX or GSX server, no kidding, that's what we're running this virtual machine on. Um, network time protocol server is listening on this port, port 123, UDP, not a big deal. Um, let's see, and then again it talks more about VMware stuff on here, open port, uh, tells you the trace route, the open TCP ports, kind of gives you a summary there. Um, see the remote host responded to an ICPM, uh, ICMP timestamp request. The timestamp reply is an ICMP message, which replies to a timestamp message. So it's not really a big deal here, to be honest with you. Um, well, it tells you that's Microsoft Windows. So here, here's the situation, guys. Like I said, it's Nmap does a much better job. It'll tell you it's like Windows XP Service Pack 2 or Service Pack 3 or, you know, Windows 2008 R2. I mean, it does a much better job. Um, no open UDP ports. Uh, information about the scan. And then it just tells you basically what version of, of OpenVos Scanner it's running, version 6, um, NVT uh, feed version. You want to make sure this is up to date. So 2013, 5, uh, 22. Um, and we go down here, scanner IP, that's the IP of this box here, uh, type of NVT feed is the open boss NVT feed, and then so it's going to say port scanner and map, and then the port ranges, and it's going to go all through its thing here. Um, so basically, that's pretty much it guys, it's kind of a repeat going towards the bottom here. Uh, if you look here, it says it is possible to extract OS domain and SMB server information from the session setup and X response packet, which is generated during NTLM authentication. Well, obviously. Uh, and then you can see like there's there's other tools inside Kali Linux like um, MBT scan, I think is one of them uh, that you can enumerate, you know, on the then the local subnet, uh, you know, all the desktop. Um, names, the work groups, uh, domains, all that good stuff. Um, tells your MAC address of the remote computer, which is good if you want to do ARP spoofing, man in the middle attacks, things like that. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. So that's that's a quick overview of OpenVos and the web UI for that. Um, I will, let's see, let, you know what, let's see if we can log in as Bob and see exactly what kind of access Bob can have. So let's uh, open up another tab here in 192, oops, sorry, HTTPS. It's going to ask us to log in to Bob. Okay, so we're logged in now as Bob, which you can see up here at the top says logged in as, as Observer Bob. Okay, um, he's probably not going to be able to, I would hope not, I would hope he's not able to get into any of this stuff here. Yep, here we go. Access refused. So that is an ACL list, guys. Um, so if he goes to scan management, let's see if he can do a new task. It looks like he might be able to. Um, I don't, let's let's just try it out. Uh, scan config, full and fast, local host. Oh, okay, see, so he can't really do anything besides localhost. Let's see if he can actually add in a target. I don't think he's going to be able to, but let's just see. Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, I'll leave all this fine. Ah, okay, good. So while he's presented with a menu, he can't do anything because he's just an observer. I just wanted to test to make sure that their security works fine. Um, great is forbidden for observer users. If he was a regular user, he might be able to do it. If he was an administrator, he definitely could do it, but we don't want anybody to be administrator but us, right? Um, so he can't even create a scan, so that means he really can't create a tasks, but he can look at the tasks. Um, if you see, if he can click on this, let's see if he can look at it. Yeah, see, now he can look at it, and he can see what all has been done, and then he could probably go to HTML and download, and he can open it. Yeah, see, so he's an observer, guy, so it, it says what it means, and it means what it says. Um, he can only view reports. He can't do anything else. So that's a good thing. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, next time around, we're going to try to set up Nessus uh, and use the community version, which you're not supposed to use to scan. Um, you know, you're not supposed to use it for business. You're supposed to use it for personal only. If you want to use it for business, you have to go with their commercial license, BS, which costs a ton of money. Um, We'll set it up anyway just to show you how it works and get you familiar with it. Like I said in the other videos, you know, if you're out there doing this and you're making big bucks doing it, don't be cheap. Spend the money. Get the, the other, you know, subscriptions to Nessus and uh, uh, Metasploit and things like that. Uh, we'll set up Metasploit next, uh, the community version, so to speak. They have a command line version as a web and a web version. The web version kind of sucks for community. Um, we'll go through using things like SC... Uh, toolkit which is social engineering toolkit uh, we're gonna go through I mean these are all future videos we're gonna go through art poisoning and man in middle uh, man in the middle attacks we're gonna do a specific tutorial um, video tutorial just on Wireshark and sniffing and that'll tie in with our ARP spoofing and stuff like that we're gonna do a tutorial on cracking hashes for hash passwords uh, that you can find while you're sniffing packets on Wireshark uh, excuse me while doing a man in the middle attack so, I mean, there's a ton of stuff that we got to go through yet, guys. So stay tuned. Uh, and as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you hate it, give it a thumbs down. And, uh, you know, like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Um, check us out on our blog, learnnetsec.blogspot.com. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching.